You're watching People's Daily Talk, and today we are very pleased to be joined by Professor Terry Zanowski, one of the real giants in the field of artificial intelligence. Professor, it's great to have you in the show. Wonderful to be here. So, Professor, I really have to say artificial intelligence is probably one of the biggest buzzwords during recent years, but still, if you do a task and ask anyone on the street about the definition of, of AI, probably most of them couldn't offer a clear understanding. So first of all, can I ask you to define artificial intelligence in some plain words? Well, the term artificial intelligence, so it's a very new field and is really born when computers became available. And the goal was to program a computer to be able to solve problems that humans can solve. So basically, it's like machine mimic cognitive functions of human Right. that enabled them to learn and solve problems like human. Well, there, there you're pointing out something that was missing from the early uh, attempt. So the early version of artificial intelligence uh, was not based on learning, which is a biological function, which is very important. But instead, the idea was to write a program that could take every detail of a problem uh, like, for example, vision is a very difficult problem, but the idea was to write a vision program that could recognize objects and could solve uh, difficult, uh, you know, cluttered scenes and, uh, and explain, you know, what, what was in the scene. And uh, the, unfortunately, uh, that turned out to be a much more difficult problem than anyone uh, could have imagined. And the reason is that all of that is happening unconsciously, beneath your level of consciousness. And so you assume that it must be easy. And that turned out to be wrong. It took uh, over 60 years before we made progress. And it was not using a computer program. It was by adding learning. The deep learning approach is, is much more biologically inspired. And, and, and we were able to make much more progress. The other re reason I wrote the book was I was reading about um, some uh, uh, you know, statements made by very famous people saying, doomsday, you know, that uh, AI is going to uh, replace humans. And this is like uh, terrible. And we should, you know, we have to do something now. Otherwise, we'll be taken over. So your view is AI won't replace human? I think that that's a very unlikely event. Uh, you know, nobody knows for sure. In fact, it's very difficult to make predictions, especially about the future. But here's something where we can already see that the results that have, have uh, happened so far with applications are, are just the opposite, that they're helping to amplify human cognition. Uh, so helping get rid of the drudgery of, of, for example, if you're a doctor having to go over uh, x-ray uh, pictures and trying to understand what's happening inside of your, of your body or your brain. That takes a lot of training and it's uh, very time consuming. But now deep learning has been able to do that in, in some cases uh, better than doctors. And, and now that's going to help assist doctors to make better diagnoses. Right. So talking about application, Professor, what do you think are the common industries that you think AI can maybe have a big impact in the near future? Anybody who has a big data set uh, can benefit from this approach because it, it, is, it, is, it is an approach which takes the data and extracts out information that then can be converted into knowledge. And, uh, and, 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 and interestingly, some of the applications are in science. For example, I work on the brain. Uh, neuroscientists are now being, are recording with new ways of uh, optical recording, new ways with uh, big electro arrays. They can record from thousands of neurons at the same time. We were limited until recently to record one at a time, and it, it was a very slow, painful process. But now that we can see a whole population, we can begin to see patterns that you couldn't see with a single neuron. And, and this is really transforming neuroscience in a way that, uh, it, it, and, and by the way, it's with machine learning uh, and specifically deep learning that we're able to see those patterns. So it's, uh, it's an interesting irony that deep learning was inspired by the brain and now is being used to study the brain. So in your view, the application of AI can be really, really comprehensive. Yes. Okay, so in your book, actually, uh, your view is that AI won't cause job losses, but it, it only makes uh, people even smarter. But how do we explain the phenomenon that um, if autonomous vehicles become widely adopted, drivers will become an outdated occupation? Well, uh, 
I, I think that the, if you, if, the way to answer that question is that you have to look back in history. And let's look at the internet uh, in terms of uh, jobs, okay? So in some ways, it's really uh, taken advertising money away from newspapers and from you know, television and so forth, but it has created millions of jobs for internet jobs, right? You know, machine learning is a, is a, is a small part of what's going on but there are jobs as being, say, a, a web page designer, so as someone who has artistic abilities is needed to, for a new medium, and uh, there's, uh, there's uh, massively open online courses that uh, allow people to uh, reach into homes. So the, these are all things that uh, create new jobs that are actually better than the old jobs, right? But uh, the, the, it's gonna require retraining, in fact, one of the important uh, parts of education uh, in the future is gonna be something called lifelong learning. As the world changes, uh, you, you're, what you've learned in school is, is no longer gonna be able to apply because it'll be obsolete. And so you have to go back and you have to relearn new skills. And this is where the, the MOOC, Massively Open Online Course, is really gonna help everybody in the future. But so this is what, where we should be expecting uh, changes to occur. In the case of the, the reading x-rays with the doctor, if the machine can do it faster and better and cheaper, the doctor is gonna benefit. The doctor can now spend the, the doctor's time with patients instead of with the x-rays. And that is gonna help the patients, it's gonna help everybody. Right, right. So actually, this is based on an aggregate uh, uh, calculation in the society. Uh, for instance, like um, if drivers lose their job, but there are other jobs created by making those autonomous vehicles. So it's a, an aggregate level in society. I know you are not social scientist, but I still want to ask, ask you this question. Do you think technologies like artificial intelligence will narrow social inequality or broaden social inequality? This is a, a really important question, and it really is going to depend on how AI is regulated into the future in terms of how, uh, what we allow to happen. Let me go back to your question about uh, aggregate jobs, okay? Right, the steam engine amplified human power. And, and what it meant was that th things that were backbreaking work uh, for humans, like plowing a field if you're a farmer, uh, it required fewer human beings to do that work anymore. So what happened to the children of the farmers? Well, they went to cities, right? And what did they do in a the city? They worked in a factory. And the factory was powered by steam engines. And, and, and they were able to make machines, uh, looms that created cloth, huge impact on creativity. These were people now that needed better education. So they invented a school system so they could become literate. So what happened was that it, over generations, uh, you get a migration from a very uh, uh, you know, difficult, demanding physical work to less demanding, but now in a, in a better environment and ability to get a, a higher pay because you're more productive. So it, it's really a shift and it's, it's not, it, yes, it's true. You're replacing a farming job with a factory job, but it's, it's raising the level of everybody's uh, abilities and their productivity. And, and so the thing, same thing will probably happen when you introduce a new technology like AI into society, there'll be a, a transition where people who are, are doing menial things now will no longer need to do them anymore, or repetitive things. I shouldn't say menial, because even things that you know, are, rep are repetitive are actually very important. So that's where, we're, where I think we're headed. I think that it's gonna be a, a shift that is generational. Uh, it's going to uh, require lifelong learning because our educational system is slow and changing. But, uh, but that's going to, I already see it happening, and so I, I, I'm much more optimistic about uh, that transition. Okay, with the benefits you said, but still there is a daunting scenario in my mind. Maybe in the future, I not only need to outsmart people to land uh, for a job, but I also need to outsmart machine to compete for a job. That's really something very stressful for me. Well, that's, uh, see, that, that, the way you've couched that, outsmart, is as if there's a competition here, right? That you're competing with the machine. It could be completely different. 
uh, and I gave you the example of the doctor who is partnering with the machine, and they're working together. And one of the most remarkable things that uh, has occurred over the last year is that we have uh, benchmarked performance. So we've benchmarked pr the performance of AI on s problems like you know, diagnosing a certain disease, like uh, skin cancer. And, and, and what we've shown is that AI can do as, best as, as, as good as the best doctors. And, uh, and now we can ask the following question. Suppose the doctor works together with the AI. So the AI is, is giving its best guess for what's going on. Then the doctor can use his knowledge of the context of the patient's history and similar things that they've seen in the past. And interestingly, if you combine the two, the combination of the doctor and the AI can do better than either the doctor alone or the AI alone. So it's going to be a hybrid mm -hmm. rather than one versus the other. So there will be more a cooperative uh, partnership. Yes, I think that that is already playing out. There's enough evidence for that. So I think that that is the most likely scenario. Not for every area. It may be that with uh, like Go, for example, <laughs> we know that that uh, uh, Alpha Alpha Go, who beat Kujie, the uh, the world's Go champion, that that's already happened, and you know that that hit the, the the Go is now at a superhuman level. But there's a story here which is very interesting, which is that you know 1997, uh, Deep Blue, which is an IBM chess program, beat Kasparov, who is the world's chess champion, right? And 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 what has happened since then is that uh, anyone in the world with a chess program can now play at the, uh, a, an opponent at the grandmaster level. And the world's chess champion is a Norwegian, a young Norwegian boy, Magnus Carlsen, who grew up in a small Norwegian village. And he would have never gotten to be a grandmaster if he, in the village, because there's no one there to play chess with. But he was able to play the program to a very high level. Uh, he didn't have to be in the big city. He didn't have to have a membership in a club. And, and that now has democratized chess. It means that it's open to anybody in any in, anywhere in the world, because these chess programs now are really cheap. Anybody could have them. And so this is really, these, the, the, by looking at the past and, and getting some idea of how things have played out uh, in, in other circumstances with other uh, applications, uh, we're beginning to see that it, it could be very different from the scenarios, the doomsday scenarios that I told you about earlier. My, my feeling is that uh, is the place where it's really going to be essential to set the limit is in the military applications. Because there, if you have an AI that's capable of killing people, the last thing you want is for that decision to be made by an AI.